Welcome to the channel. This is Go Greddy, and welcome to something a little bit different. This time we're going to do a how to video. That's right, how to make lots of money and lots of XP in the shortest amount of time. And your time is valuable. So I've got the timestamps below so you can skip right on to each little section that you want to look at. But before we get to that, if you could be so kind as hit the like and or subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, in third place, that is third in money making per minute and XP per minute, is in the premium sports cars lounge within the professional series of the GT League. And so you will go to Blue Moon Bay and you'll select the McLaren MP4 12C. No, not the Enzo Ferrari. The MP4 12C, yes. Select that and go into Blue Moon Bay. Go to the car settings. And what you want to do is you want to drop the weight as low as possible, decrease the power to where you go to N500, and then slap on some super sticky racing soft tires, and you are ready to rock and roll and make some money as you will get 109% car bonus, and if you get a clean race, 50% bonus, you make lots of money. Now, these are my settings, so I kind of went through slowly here so you can see them and you can copy them. If you like or not, you can set your own settings there, whatever it's all up to you. Now, I will also add that you can get the King of Ovals trophy if you run this enough. I suggest getting a new McLaren for the job. Mine was glitched. The only way I could get the trophy to pop was if I bought a new McLaren and ran every lap needed to get the King of Ovals trophy. It was the only way I could get it to come off. So if you're, if you're struggling with that trophy, that might be a way to do it. So now we start King of Ovals. If you notice up here in the upper right hand corner, these cars are equally spaced. So you have to be extremely extremely patient in this race this is also the least favorite of my three races for making money and xp um because it is a very easy to hit the wall which will ruin your clean race and lose you 50 percent it is also very easy to touch one of these cars and sometimes the game is, is quirky sometimes touching the car causes you to lose the clean race bonus and sometimes it doesn't so the best bet is just not to touch anything <laughs> wall car nothing stay on the track you only need to run about 47 second laps high 47s to be able to beat the lead car i've never had any issues if i'm running an average 47 second lap so if you can make the 47 second laps you should be able to pull this off fairly easy now i'm going to take you through some laps where i break what i do etc be careful going into the car corners all these cars will dive down to the inside and coming out of the corners they will rise back up across the track to the wall so if you are on the inside of them a lot of times they'll dive into you and if you're on the outside of them coming out of the corner they will rise up into you and smash you against the wall also be careful what i just did there and touch the curb sometimes that can upset your car enough to get you off the track now my setup is a little bit drifty but uh i don't know it, it just helps me um corner the car quickly when i need to <laughs> because sometimes you gotta dodge these cars um don't particularly enjoy this car on this track but it, hey it makes money so right there i'm breaking before the 100 meter board at the white there's a big white block before the 100 meter board i patiently wait on that mercedes to get out of my way before i get on the gas again my first lap a 51 my that's my out lap my 45 second lap there uh was lap one which actually a lot too, really. But uh, not a bad lap, really, a 45.9. I mean, if you can run those whole race, you'll get this done pretty quickly. Um, not typical. Usually, like I said, you're running 47s, 46s, 48s, depending on traffic uh, and how you catch the cars. What I like to do on this part of the straight is always pass the inside. I don't I don't like to be left between the car and the wall because if they squeeze you, there's, there's nowhere for you to go except hit the brakes. So... If you go down to the inside like I did there, you're, you're okay. You don't have to worry about squeezing. As you can see there, I'm breaking before the 100-meter board at that white box, right before that white box. You don't, have to, you don't have to enter that corner too hot, but that is where you make up all your time with these super racing, super soft racing soft tires and the lightweight of the McLaren is you're making up time on those fast cars in the corners because you're just sticking as we go through there. Okay, so up here, we've got two cars. we got to figure out how we have to pass. Again, I, I don't really like passing on the outside. I like to just keep down on the inside. keeps you out of trouble. So, And also, we're passing the McLaren, which is difficult because we have the uh, same type of horsepower numbers. Similar, rather. So, um, I, 
I really dislike passing the McLaren <laughs> in this challenge. But not a problem there. Pass them up both to the inside. Um, if you have a decision to make, you're not sure if you can pass someone on this corner, it's best just to back out like I did there. See as he rises to the top of the track, just back out of it and, and just pass them up as you're coming on the straight. That's as, works as well going into the corner. If you don't think you can make the pass clean, just back out of it. Get on the throttle when you can and pass them up on the straight. I've, I've never had an issue where I do that catching the lead guy. And usually, almost 99% of the time, you'll catch the lead guy on lap 10. And, you know, right now we're on lap 5. I'm still 13 seconds back. You think, my goodness, you know, you're racing. You're like, I'm still 13 seconds back. We're on lap 5. Only, you know, two-thirds of the race is left. But you'll catch him. It's not going to be a problem. So there you can see I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get past the McLaren before the braking zone. So I just backed out of it, just kind of cruising through this corner. I'm going to take him right here on the straight. So, you know, like I said, this is a good track. Also for doing your King of Ovals um, trophy, if you haven't gotten it already, if you're like me. I had some kind of weird glitch when I, I used a different PS4 to race Gran Turismo Sport uh, one time in my son's room. And um, for whatever reason, it reset all of my stats. If you look at my Kudos Prime, I have this weird difference in the number of wins and poles I have compared to what I actually have. It's got a little asterisk next to it or something like that. It got glitched somehow. And it totally messed up this King of Ovals trophy to where I just, I must have run... A gazillion laps here and Northern Isle and uh, some other oval. I can't remember what the other one is. But anyway, a bunch of ovals, mainly this one, trying to get that trophy. I did it forever. Finally, you know, I stopped using the McLaren that I was using. I bought a brand new McLaren, this orange one that you see here. And I just used it. And sure enough, right when I hit that mileage, the trophy popped off. So... Don't know why. I guess maybe the game didn't recognize that car that I had before the, the error occurred or whatever it may be. But uh, So if you're struggling with that trophy, give that a try. It may help you. All right, so we are more than halfway through this race. As you can see, I've got you know lap times 45, 46, 47, 48, 48, 47. Like I said, you, you keep it around 47, you'll be fine. So passing the Bugatti here, he's going to also pass. I'm giving him plenty of room. I'm keeping my eye on this corner upcoming. I do not want to be trapped underneath the car coming into this corner. Because like I said, if they touch you, that, that clean race bonus is gone. And there's nothing worse than being on lap eight. Halfway through the race, someone hits you and you lose that 50% clean race bonus. Because I mean, that is 50% of your money and that is 50% of your XP. And we all know how hard it is to get that XP to get to level 50. It is a long, arduous climb to that 50 and what's cool is even like in the making of this video and trying out some different tracks and whatnot i made like eight million dollars just just doing this just racing clean and getting my clean race bonus and my car bonus um I made a lot of money so thanks to y'all <laughs> i need a how-to video uh, i was able to make eight mil in this process of course when i finally finished the lewis hamilton challenge be all for not but whatever hey Maybe you don't have the Lewis Hamilton challenge. You just want to make some cash. Get a car that you like. All right, so lap nine coming up on another McLaren. Uh, this is the lead McLaren, I do believe. And we pass him up. And there we are in first place. Now, once I get past the, the lead car, um, the, the Ferrari gives you more of a battle. Um, I think it's the LaFerrari, if I remember correctly. And uh, it will pass you back up on this straight sometimes, and it's kind of aggravating. You will catch him in the corner again. The problem is you usually have to pass him in the corner um, or outbreak him coming into that sharp corner, which is really the easiest place to pass him. If you're side-by-side -side or close to side-by-side -side going into the very sharp corner, corner one, I guess you would call it, um, then that's you just easily outbreak him through there you can also pass him fairly easy here because he gets really slow but he likes to stay kind of the inside a little bit so it makes it difficult but uh the mclaren and not so much so now once you get in the lead your goal is 100 percent race clean i i've never had the lead car catch back up to me after i've taken the lead i have however done something stupid and hit the wall 
or hit another car <laughs> or something like that and again lose you that clean race bonus now you're gonna get the 109 percent car handicap bonus no matter what so no matter what you do you're gonna get that all right so as we're coming to this big curve here i'm gonna back off because you know i could i could have easily caught up to him and tried to pass him on the outside there but he would have just ran into me coming out the corner and i would have lost my bonus so again i just backed out of it i've got the lead no big deal you know don't want to jeopardize the money all right lap 12 so we're almost there as you can see my lap times are starting to normalize a little bit as i'm i'm getting into these areas of slightly larger gaps so we're getting down into the 46s but again just taking my time sometimes i don't know what it is with me i i want to try and set a really fast time just to see what i can do and then i end up like breaking too late too hard and hitting the wall or something like that so i have to keep reminding myself my point is not to see how fast i can do an individual lap it's to make lots of xp uh to get to level 50 so uh of course before it was to make money and get lots of laps in so that i could get the the trophy um but now i'm trying to get to level 50 i've got like 360,000 XP points left. Um, so if I, you know, were to do some math, at, you know, the rate at which I can get XP points, it's going to take like 10 hours of driving tracks to, to get that. That's that's a lot of driving. Um, repetitive driving, you know, farming XP. <laughs> 10 hours is kind of a, a long day of driving. You could try doing it, you know, through daily races and stuff like that, but it'd really take you a long time. So, here we are, lap 13 of 15. If you've stuck with me, it's gotten a little bit boring as we have fallen into a nice gap here. So this is really what you want. This is this gap, if you look on that mini map, that is the kind of gap that you want to see. You want to fall into something like that when you're out in the lead and just be able to finish your race clean and safe and get that bonus and that extra money. So in the left-hand corner, you can see about nine and a half seconds in the lead now on lap 14. Plenty of lead over McLaren. Now the Ferrari, Ferrari will sometimes scare you a little bit. He'll stay four and a half, five seconds back sometimes, you know. Um, and it's very fast on the straight. But uh, it, it won't catch back up to you again unless you make a, a pretty big mistake. But you can always catch right back up to him and pass him in the last five laps. Um, usually not much of a problem. So here you are on the final lap. No one in sight to mess with our race. That's how we like it. We are absolutely going to finish this with the clean race bonus as well as the 109% car handicap bonus. And we cross the line on lap 15. It looks like low 46 second lap not bad not bad at all so there we go win number 35 here as you see I've, I've run this one a few times actually that's number 36 how about that we ran that one in 11 minutes and 49 seconds you know i've run it faster i've run it slower um but overall that's roughly the time you're going to run somewhere between 11 40 and 11 50 um so when we do a little math that comes out to 585 experience points per minute and 26,800 credits per minute. And that is why it comes in at number three. Because you can actually get more XP and more credits per minute in a couple different races. So let's move on to number two. Second place in my money-making, XP-making machine. We're going to go back to the professional league in the GT League series. We're going to go down to the Group 1 Cup. Now, I got to say, this is my favorite. It is Monza in the Group 1. Um, when you do out the laps and the miles and all that, you come to find out you can get this race done pretty quickly. So, again, going with the soft tires on the Group 1 car. 
No other changes made to the car settings stock except for racing soft tires. And welcome to Monza, the Cathedral of Speed. And we are in the 92 Nissan R92 CP. And this car is an absolute animal here. I love this car. It's so mechanical. It's fast down the straights. It's good in the corners. Good enough anyway. Look, at, look we're going 230 miles an hour through uh, you know, Curva Grande there. And then we slam on the brakes as we get past the 200 board. Try not to hit the Bugatti in the rear end. You do not want to do that. That will get rid of your clean race bonus. Get on the brakes a little bit early because you are going to catch P1 by the end of lap three. You know, well before the halfway mark. They, they just have superior pace <laughs> on the straight and the scar. They just can't hold you back. As we blow by the Mercedes here, and let me tell you what, that Mercedes, no joke on this track either. A lot of fun to drive here as well. I'm going to show you some of the other cars I like to use here a little bit later. But uh, we head, we get on the rear end of the Porsche here. I think that's the Porsche. Heading through Ascari. Coming out. Heading towards Parabolica. And we're looking good. Ah, oh, you just can't help but love the R92 CP. So... Uh, speaking of, of talking about uh, other cars, I'm going to try and talk about tendencies of these cars as well. Uh, the Audi likes a double apex that turn. Or is that the Toyota? Oh my goodness, it might have been the Toyota. Anyway, the Audi likes a double apex that turn back there, so be careful if you try to go down on the inside. Everyone else kind of takes it and, and swings out wide. For some reason, the Audi doesn't. Um, and through here, you can generally pass on the inside until right before the beginning of the Curva Grande. So if you get into Curva Grande, they're going to get down to the inside. If you're on the inside, they're probably going to hit you. I backed out of the <laughs> that through the chicane. I was lucky. I did not get hit by the Pujo there. Um, he's he's pretty easy bait. I did run this this race in the Pujo, managed to win it, but it just wasn't a very fun car to drive. It's really just kind of a bland car around here. I don't know. It's just nothing very exciting about it. It seems like the uh, old LMP1 cars or Group C cars, whatever they're called. Man, they just add a little extra bit of excitement to the seven laps around here. And that's the other thing that I like about this over the oval race is it's a track and it's got left turns and right turns. So, you know, hey, you actually aren't just going around and around and around and around in circles. Um, and the cars aren't quite that weird equal spacing. Um, feels a little more like racing here than just we threw a bunch of cars on a track. Good luck passing them without hitting them. All right, so we are coming up on, it looks like, the uh, Tomahawk there. Uh, a lot of times he'll be leading the race. So here we are, lap two, and very beginning of lap three, we are already in first. We ran a 126 on our opening lap, which is pretty fast for an opening lap. 125, uh, 655 for our second lap, also very good. I mean, I'm telling you, this car is the machine if you want to make XP and money at this track it's just it makes it so easy um so now that we're out in lead let me show you a couple of the other cars that i like to use in this race okay so for the more modern cars i, I like the mazda lm55 it's good here but right now i'm showing you the the pujo the 908 hdi fun car to drive here you know good times it's easy to drive it's pretty quick down the straight it's fun um also the jag xjr9 as you see right here um, if I'm not, if I'm going to go to a more modern car, the Tomahawk VGT GR1 is also a really good car here. Not showing it, but man, it's it's hard to beat that. Very stable car like the LM55. Uh, another old car that's fun to drive here is the Mazda 787B. A lot of fun, and of course the Sauber Sauber Mercedes. I can never say that. Um, it's awesome here. It's probably the second best car here is the Mercedes to the R92 CP. So anyway. So those are some other cars you can use while you're here as we get back to the race at hand. Here we are on lap three and just dominating this race in the R92 CP. It is just so quick around this track. So like I said, um, the, the newer cars that, that you can race around here, you know, like I said, the, the LM55 and the Tomahawk VGT GR1, uh, both just excellent cars if you are new to monza racing you're just trying to get some xp trying to figure things out um 
if you're not the professional league yet, you haven't risen that high in the rankings. If you do all of the challenges, the the track challenges, the, uh, the other little challenges they have, I forget what they call them. If you get through all those, you'll probably get enough XP that you can start to unlock some of these other races, and then start racing those races. You'll build XP and points, and eventually you'll lock up, unlock the professional series soon enough. And then once you unlock the professional series, <laughs> you can just you can just grind money and XP so quickly in these three races. It's it's just unreal. Um, you know, better better than any of the other ones that I that I've done anyway. So there may be one out there you can get more with. Uh, if it has something to do with the rubber band and uh, some other crazy nonsense, I'm not into that. Uh, I don't like tanking DR to win races. You know, I don't like uh, I don't like using rubber bands to make money or XP. Uh, I feel like I'm cheating myself. Uh, so when I accomplish all these goals, you know, you want to you want to feel like you, you did it. You get some pride. And I mean, I could I could probably I could you know, pay one of my buddies to come do the Lewis Hamilton challenge for me. Well, what good does that do? You're like, hey, look, you know, I've got it complete, but I didn't do it myself. Uh, so uh, anyway, so let's uh, let's take you through a lap here in just a second and uh, just kind of give you some pointers with this car. Um, you know where all the, the breaking points are that I use. So here we are, wham, 121.039 last lap, that's pretty good. Um, broke back there just before the 100 meter board and trying to get down to the apex on the right hand side as quickly as you can and then get on the throttle before that little orange thing shows up. I mean, just stand on it and look for the grip. And hopefully it will hang on. If you start going wide, just lift, like I said, it's, just, it's not a, uh, a you know, time trial, it is a clean race trial is what this is. It is purely a clean race trial. So you can hug the inside of that corner nicely there. Again, you're going to get on the brakes here about 175. So halfway between the 200 and the 150, and then you can hit these curbs. You can abuse the hell out of them. You can actually take a little more of the curb than I did even there. And then once you feel like the car can take all the throttle coming out the corner, get on the throttle. Before the 50 board brake back there, get to the apex. I'm going to go over that one again. Again, get before the 50 board there. Uh, get on the gas. It will run wide. But if you ease on the throttle and just don't slam it, typically you can come out of that corner just fine. So heading into this car, we're going to break at the bridge here. Shift it down to the third. Missed my apex actually pretty badly right there. About half throttle or so as we go through a scar. And then we're going to hammer down, get in the fourth, and come out the other side. So again, we're going to break right up here, right before the 100 meter board, right at the 100 meter board. Go down to the third, get to the inside and get on the gas. Actually, I missed my apex pretty badly there again. You see, I'm running a little bit wide there. Still going to pull a pretty decent time here. It looks like, a, again, about a 121 and a half. So not as good as my 121.039, but kind of wish I'd done the, uh, <laughs> the breaking points and everything for that lap. But I did have a lot of slipstream at the beginning from, from all those cars, so maybe that was why. Who knows? So once again, you'll see up here, halfway between 200 and 150. I just judge it about halfway. You can eat these sausages. I almost go too wide there, trying to break a little too late. Uh, again, this is where I'm kind of challenging myself for a fast lap time. <laughs> I should just be trying to get a clean race. Breaking back there before the 50 board, you want to get on the gas again. There's a driveway on that corner on the right-hand side. You want to be back on the gas at that driveway for the maximum amount of acceleration. I'm actually driving pretty sloppily <laughs> right now, but... Uh, that's that, that'll be your acceleration point. If you slow down right, you want to get back on that gas in about the driveway. Again, right here at the bridge. Get down to the third. Get to the inside. You can. You want to get to where you're almost clipping those sausages on the left. And like I said, ease back on that throttle as you're coming out the other end. You can even shift up in the fourth like I did there and give it even more gas because it just won't have the power to blow out the rear tires like you would if you were in third gear. So here we are coming into the final lap. Again, once again, breaking at the 100-meter board. There we go. I get back to the inside a little bit better there. Not great. I had to actually do a little safety left. Getting a fourth. Head down that straight. I just love the way this car flies down the straight. It is awesome. So as you can see, you're just ripping through these laps quickly. I mean, it's only seven laps at a minute 21 a lap. You know, so you do a little bit of math there. It's just going to be a little over nine minutes for the race. Nine and a half minutes is not a whole heck of a lot of time. To score some serious money and XP as you will see soon so and you can even make it a challenge like you can you can say okay I want to win this race and and do it clean in every group one car that I've got in my garage you do that and 
you can come out with a lot of money and XP and you won't bore yourself to death like you would running Blue Moon in the McLaren until your eyes are bloodshot and falling out of your head like I used to do. Like that's just oh, it's a mind numbing course where this one I don't know, I just I just think it's fun. Um, of course you may hate Mons and be like, Grady, you're just <laughs> no way I'm doing this over and over again. Probably feel like I would about Big Willow. But uh, anyway, if you like Monza, this is great, you know. Um, easy way to make that XP and them Benjamins. So, final lap. And our last time out of Parabolic as we head down the straight towards the finish line. We cross the line with a 121.623. And then you got win number 11. Oh, make that 12. So... A lot of fun on this track, and you know, using these different Group C LMP1 cars. We made 330,000 in credits, 6,300 XP. That's 650 XP per minute and 34,000 credits per minute. Outdoing the Blue Moon Oval for XP and credits, as well as XP and credits per time unit. One minute. So... If you're limited on time, man, you can jump in there and crank out 330,000 credits in under 10 minutes. That's not too shabby. But is it the best? No, 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 no. It is not the best. Well, I have saved the best for last. So here we are. Number one in credits per minute and XP per minute, as well as overall credits and XP for the short race. <laughs> we shall go again. GT League Professional Series to the 2014 Nations Cup race in the X-Bowl cars. A Red Bull cars, not X-Bowl cars. Anyway, we got to pick the Red Bull 2014 standard car. It's the only one available. And it is absolutely <laughs> mental driving this car. I cannot do this race too many times in a row. Or, I don't know, I just... I start to lose it. I start to lose it after a little bit. I can do the... Uh, the um, the group one races at Monza, man, I could do that for like a couple hours straight without much trouble. This race, I could probably pull two or three of these in a row before I want to, I don't know, just hit my head and sheetrock or something like that. Just okay. So nothing you can do the settings. If you turn up the settings, it makes the car heavier, so you can't make the car any lighter. So you can't do anything to the power. If you, uh, it'll just make the car less fast if you change it. So 100% stock with the racing soft tires and. Here we go at Lasarth, a.k.a. Le Mans, trying to chase down the fighter jets, but they are leaving us in the dust. So let's point out breaking point number one right here before the total sign. Getting on the brakes, getting down to third gear. Be careful. I, you know, I try to keep all, you know, at least at least two tires on the track. I, you know, I just don't try and cut corners here. I don't know where the track limits are on this track. I have no clue. Uh, if I said I didn't know, I'd be lying to you. Right there, it's just a little lift as you go through there, coming out of the S's, uh, down towards the Molson Strait. So we're going to get into the slipstream of that Red Bull racer. And we're going to put them in the rearview mirror and head on to the next one. So the breaking point here is about the 100-meter board. Uh, you can break a little earlier if you like, but uh, I usually like to break about the 100-meter board there. Drop it down to third. I try to stay off the curbing there to avoid getting... You know, any kind of off track penalty and then exiting there I can touch that curb and I haven't had any problems with it you know getting rid of a clean race so jumping the slipstream here always trying to use that slipstream as much as possible very important because it is actually pretty difficult to chase down first place in this race uh, racing clean because you remember you gotta race clean you can't just just throw it down in a corner if you hit them at no big deal you won the race anyway um, you've got to actually get the clean race bonus so again breaking at the 100 meter board back there and then going through the second chicane, which I believe they might call the Michelin chicane. I don't really remember. Um, and heading down towards the Molson corner. Thinking about going down the inside, I think better of it. The breaking point there is at the curb, and you can break a little later than the curb. Be very careful coming through this corner if you find a car. These cars like to double stop on these, on these corners. I don't know what the deal is, but they have a tendency to double break. So they'll break, and then they'll, they'll release. You think they're going to roll through the corner, and they break again. So... If you're behind the car, be ready for that. Just try to catch them coming out of the corner. It's the easiest way to do it. Here I got two cars almost side by side. I'm going to go along the outside here. You can uh, you can get pretty far outside there. 
um, as you go into Arnage, heading down towards Indianapolis. Um, but uh, you will get your tires will get dirty, uh, so just be a little cautious if you go to the outside there. Uh, mostly, I just try to avoid the contact. Try to get on the gas early here, pass them up as we head towards the per Porsche curves, which are quite possibly. Uh, the most mental part of this whole race. So I go along the outside there. They like to squeeze down onto the apexes and the corners. You keep it flat through the Porsche curves. Just keep it pinned. As you can see, I'm keeping it pinned. You can hear the, the engine noise change, but I'm not releasing the gas pedal. <laughs> I've got it completely flat through the Porsche curves. Dropping down to sixth gear there. I didn't take that corner too well, to be honest with you, but I'm just, like I said, just trying to stay on the track. Uh, break point for the chicane is somewhere in that driveway for the pit exit i usually break about the middle because you know you catch up to these guys in the chicane anyway and you can't really dive on the chicane because if you hit one of them you're gonna lose your clean race bonus so make the pass here heading down towards the dunlop curve where are you dunlop curve there you go coming up right there so made a pass there heading in towards the dunlop curve now we're heading down towards the s's and I'm having to back off on the gas. Break there well before that driveway. I'm probably halfway between the corner and the driveway is fine. Get in the fourth gear and hit that apex. I'm going to try and make the run on them out of the corner. This is one of the trickier parts to pass right through here. They, they, they really have a hard time deciding which side of the track they want to be on as they exit that corner. So be prepared to pass the inside. Because if you pass to the outside, on the left-hand side, they can push you into that wall. And if you, if you touch the wall you lose the clean race bonus. So you're better off going a little bit off track towards the right and passing them on the right side there and just running off track if you have to. Uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't count it as an off track. It doesn't you know, uh, deduct that clean race bonus. So stay away from the wall. Go to the right side if you can. That's just one piece of advice from running this race a few times. It seemed to be a common occurrence. So. Here again, going towards uh, the chicane there. We're going to break at the 100 meter board. There it is. Down to third gear. Trying to get a good exit so I can catch up to P5 in front of us. Hopefully, hopefully trying to catch this guy and pass him on the short straight before Indianapolis. Getting that slipstream, but it's not going to get him. So, head down to Molson Corner. Can you get one more shot at him before we get to Indianapolis? And we get by him. So do a good job. Get by him. We're going to set our sights towards P4. Now, as we come through here, the breaking point as we go into Indianapolis is the curbing on the right-hand side. So right there, the curbing. Uh, anywhere along that curbing, you can break and still make this corner. Uh, if you wait till after the curbing to break, <laughs> you're probably going to blow the corner. So break along that curbing somewhere. Again, do not hit the backs of these cars through through these corners. So we're heading down to Arnage. Uh, they like to, again, like they like to double break. I have no idea why the, the GTS AI. So he wants to squeeze down the inside. You see, I have to go way to the left side to avoid any contact. That's what I was talking about earlier. Again, very mental through here, flat out, especially when you're following another one of these Red Bull cars because you start to lose... The front end grip because of the dirty air and get into their messy little slipstream. So I almost ran into the back of them there coming out of the Porsche S's, or uh, Porsche curves rather, um, as we head towards the last two chicanes. And we're looking pretty good right now. We are in P4 going into the final lap, and that's about where you want to be. You don't want to be too much further back than this because if you are, it's going to be really tough catching P1 on the last lap so again that's the hard part of this as well is you're having to run good laps not touch these cars absolutely stay on, on track and catch p1 who started like 15 positions in front of you or whatever i don't even remember where you start i think it's p16 i'm not sure i can't remember it might be p12 i don't know it was 60 maybe even 20 I, I i don't even know so i came really close to cutting the track right there again that is just a small lift through there on that uh the tetra rouge corner um just just a small little lift is, is all you need to get through there 
Um, you might be able to hold it flat. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it. I guess you could. I, I don't know. If my, my, my reflexes are good enough to hit that corner flat, but you might be able to. Um, just be careful coming out the other end and not hit the car from behind. So finally overtook P1 in the chicane. Did a good job there. Uh, typically, you can, you can outbreak those guys going through the chicane. Uh, they will break earlier than the hunter board. So if you're, if you're pretty close to next to them as you come up the hunter board, you can outbreak them. Uh, and make the pass going into uh, the chicane. So a final chicane of the Molson, heading down towards Molson's corner. And, you know, first lap 306, second lap 308. So we're on the last lap. So if you do some math, you can see we're, we're going to run a low nine minute overall time, which is outstanding for XP per minute and credits per minute. So. If you can run this race and get consistent W's, this is a great way to make some really good cash quick as well as to farm some XP. It gives you, gives you a very, very healthy amount of XP at the end of this race. Um, I mean, it's not like amazing. It's not way more than, than the Monza race or the Blue Moon race, but it's, it's, it's a pretty nice little, little XP at the end here. So, our last, our last run through in Indianapolis and Ornage. And one more shot at the Porsche Curves. Now, one thing I did notice is once you get out in front of P1 in this race, they, he doesn't fall off like they do in a lot of the other races. He seems to uh, use that AI rubber band effect to keep up with you. Because I've even tried, like, breaking the slipstream, moving way over to one side or the other. And it doesn't really seem to matter. They, they just run up to you anyway. So, again, keeping it flat through the Porsche Curves. And when I tell you you do this in the game, it is, it really is, it just, <laughs> it just hurts your brain. I don't know why. you just going so, you don't expect that grip to be there. I don't know. I, maybe that's what it is. So, breaking there, like I said, the middle of pit road, yeah, plenty early, but there's no reason to try and cut the chicane unless you're just really trying to set a fast lap time, which I'm not. I'm just trying to keep it clean and keep it between the lines. And we finished with a 305, 891 on our last lap. Not too terrible. So I have seven wins here, eight now. And uh, we did that in nine minutes and 22 seconds, which is pretty good. Not too bad. Like I said, I've done it slower, and I don't know that I've done it faster. Probably pretty close to that. But uh, So that gives us 345,000 credits, 6,450 XP, which comes up to 680 XP per minute and 36,390 credits per minute. That just sounds so good. <laughs> so that is our number one time saver for getting that XP and those credits you need to, you know, go into uh, the, the dealership and pick up that new Ferrari 250 GT or whatever it is you've got your eye on. Maybe it's a Shelby Cobra. Who knows? Whatever it is that you want to get. That's the way to do it. And if you're farming XP like I am right now, it's 2,400,000 XP to reach level 50 from the time you start. The last level, I think, is like 390,000 or so. So that is what I am doing right now. I'm grinding to level 50. I've got 360,000 XP to go as of this moment making this video. So wish me luck, and I will do the same for you. May your farming days be fruitful and full of a lot of credits. For myself, go Greddy. Hope you enjoyed the video, but I am out of here. I gotta go. I gotta go get XP. Y'all have a great evening. DJ Clean, take us out of here. <laughs>